rough day. You have no idea. I just might. That's the second bottle you've downed. Jai Hidari. Falco sends his regards. And what does that unholy scion of a Grox and a Brahan want from me this time? Oh, wait, I don't really care. My sole plans for tonight are drowning my grief in the Sea of Amas. Who will give you grief, all right? Get out! So, Ashmag, and tell Falco to come himself next time. Hidari, I am tired of your mess. Ow! Get some sleep. We'll talk about settling up later. Okti Sherin, light of my eyes. Can't you see my soul is full of sadness? Have you no horse at all? Let go of your material concerns and let me grieve in peace. Have we met somewhere before? Greetings, Sherin. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Well then, here's to our meeting. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that you're someone special, since you've been granted an audience with the Liege of Footfall himself. It's always a pleasure to make the acquaintance of someone powerful. And the timing couldn't be better. Jai Hedari at your service. Professional trader, shrewd commercial broker, and, may I she steal my tongue if I'm lying, the most honest dealer on footfall. Nonetheless, we all have our problems, and at times even one's many merits aren't enough to solve them. Perhaps it would be no trouble for a person with your kind of power and standing to assist someone with my kind of predicament. You see, Sherin, there's one cardinal rule on footfall. Anything goes, as long as it doesn't get in the way of business. I'm someone who's been able to exploit that rule to the fullest. And in recent years, I've hit it so big, I've become a speck of sand in someone's green eye. They used to throw small wrenches into my dealings here and there. Well, now they've decided to really put their backs into it. Some rats stole in my car and dragged it off to the seediest part of the Shadow Quarters. A crummy place even for connoisseurs of Footfall's unique atmosphere. When I asked the Leech for protection, we had a mutual misunderstanding. I believe Vladayim, in a most lamentable fashion, has forgotten his duties as guardian of the downtrodden and wronged. So I'm in desperate need of a new one. And you, Sherry, fit the bill perfectly. All I need is for you to drop by one dark corner of Footfall Shadow Quarters and pound it into the thieves' heads that taking Hedari's property carries certain risks. May the Exalted One bless you and your progeny. Then here's what we'll do. We shouldn't be seen together before we make it to the safe house. I'll head there first. I'll take my own special route so I won't be spotted. Right. Here, that's where those ash mags are keeping the stolen cargo. Out the bar, over the bridge, and to the left. There, in the depths, you'll find a small courtyard through which you can get to the place. I'll be waiting nearby. You can come when it suits you, but the sooner you do, the better. I'll see you then, Sherin.
Allow me to thank you again for helping me with the cargo, Sherin. I am sure the Ashmags who squirreled away my goods won't give up so easily, and I'll hear more about their scheming yet. Let's strike a deal, Sherin. I will watch your back if you do me a favor and watch mine. <laughs> well, enough jokes. Is there something you wanted? Oh, Sherin, I did manage to spark your interest. Allow me to invite you to a more private place. My words are meant for your ears alone. May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Sherin? No truer words have ever been said. I'm far more exciting than some small-time peddlers from Footfall. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Jai Amira Fatkhain Tamiri Ash Ifrit, the twelfth daughter of the Lord of Ifrit, a distant world at the fringes of the Imperium. The youngest child is destined to become a bargaining chip in the family's political games. But I was unwilling to accept such a fate, and wanted to choose what to become, and which path to follow. When I learned the Exalted One watches over hundreds of other worlds amidst distant stars, I understood there was an entire world of opportunities beyond Ifrit. All I had to do was break the familial bonds tying me down, and escape the planet. Which I did, a long time ago. The Caronis Expanse. A gorgeous name, isn't it? But this backwater wasn't my original destination when I escaped, Shelly. Oh no, it was the rumors of incredible freedom that brought me to the Caronis Expanse. Freedom that is generously bestowed upon everyone who can survive in these parts. All doors are open here. You can become a saint, a mogul, a kingmaker, or anyone you like, really. Here, hard work pays off, 
Unless you're used to lying by the roadside and complaining instead of toiling for the good of your soul, glory, wallet, or whatever floats your boat. I'm used to working hard, and so I found my blessing. I convinced my father I personally wish to oversee the inspection of imported goods. I had to get experience so I wouldn't bring shame on our family, didn't I? I made friends with traders, missionaries, and soldiers at the port. I listened to their stories, studied the charts, learned what documents I had to forge to escape the planet. A kind word here, a shiny coin there. And here I am, in the iron belly of a ship, braving the void in search of a new life. Consider it a mark of my trade. This year, Xenos, dumb-headed orcs. Who knew that we weren't the only ones to get tempted by the wreck of that raider? As for this treasure, I received it as a reward for a life that had been just a little too good. I was in a hurry to get to the Adeptus Amasakis after the Exalted One blessed me with immense wealth. I was two back streets away from the den when a pathetic Ashmag attacked me, envious of somebody else's fortune. All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business too. The dark side is the real Coronis Expanse, if you ask me. But what do you want to know about it, Shireen? Dynastiers drink with criminals. Rogue traders strike deals with the Caspalica. And dozens of ships stop off for a welcome break from a long voyage. Is there a more beautiful place in the entire Imperium? The Emperor is merciful to the meek and the powerful alike. There's a job for everyone as long as they have a head on their shoulders. And if you feel like talking to him in person, the statue of the Exalted One can be seen from any asteroid. You can pray to your heart's content. An ancient crime cartel that originated with the first settlers of the Calixis sector. It is run by shadowy clans with robber barons at the helm. Cross their path, and you risk making enemies all over the Caronis Expanse, or even the entire Imperium. As for the agents, they are just shameless, greedy scum. Every third person on Footfall is a Caspalican. But that doesn't mean all that rotten filth is acting together. I've been set up more than once just so some Caspalican can get one over on his rivals. And yet, the Caspalica is generous to its customers, if you can afford it. Anything can be obtained, organized, and transported for the right price. The customer is always right, unless they happen to be a rat. In which case... What gave you such an outrageous idea? Was it my immaculate garment? My gorgeous jewelry? Do not worry, Shireen. I will let you know once I become a Baroness, should the Exalted One will it. Just imagine the strong and fruitful alliance that could be forged between a rogue trader and a mastermind of the Kasbalika. It's not hard to do on footfall. I spent a year working for good old Christo. He was a brave soldier who gave up the ghost in the scuffle with orcs, and then took over his business. Having a good head on your shoulders and keeping the Exalted One in your heart helps to establish new contacts quickly. Eventually, I gathered together a group of honest and loyal people. And it only took a few successful contracts for the Caspalica to take notice. I quickly settled on footfall and started dispensing my wisdom to my protégés and subordinates. I lost the taste for getting my hands dirty. It really is simple, Sherry. The Kasbalika runs the Imperium's black market, offering special goods to those who can afford their services. Yes, I am talking about Xeno artifacts too. Alien weapons, technology, sometimes even certain kinds of living creatures. Unlike the rogue traders whose sacred warrants make them immune even from the laws of the Exalted One, Kasbalican agents are used to hiding and covering their tracks. Nobody wants to draw unwanted attention, no matter who might take an interest. Especially now that the Coronis Expanse has a warrior of the Golden Throne as its watchman. Why not? The decision is yours, Sherry.
My trade means knowing the right people and non-people. Having the right connections and making sure the precious goods find their way into the hands of my no less precious customers. My wisdom includes the knowledge of the enemies of humankind, be they Xenos or the lowest scum of the Imperium, as well as the latest knowledge about how they charge for any particular curio at the footfall market. Not even the most cunning Arji will deceive you as long as I am with you, Sherin. I promise you that. Whatever I have can be yours too. If your unfathomable wealth isn't enough for you already, I mean. It has been known to happen. After years of dealing with Xenos, I've learned their customs, and even got a grasp of their language. Except they cringe whenever I start speaking, arrogant sods. They dislike even our voices, but they never turn away our valuables. Then again, I'm used to seeing sour faces. In this trade, the easily offended go out of business. I have no doubt you will have to deal with Xenos sooner or later. When that time comes, Sherin, you will thank the Exalted One for sending me to stand at your side. Thank you, Sherin. Being able to read and write is chief among them. You may not be aware, but this science is beyond the abilities of billions of the Imperium subjects. And yet they happily keep drudging along in their factories, fundi, and assembly lines. Me? I didn't escape Ifrit to consign myself to such misery. It was literacy that paved my path to copied orders, forged signatures, counterfeited papers. The wonderful things that make the wheels of bureaucracy turn in the right direction. Compared to the rabble on footfall, perhaps? Compared to you? Be it power or money, I still have a long way to go. I could purchase one of Footfall's asteroids, but not a planet. I could subjugate a few gangs from the Shady Districts, but not Vladayim. And so the answer to your question is no. I do not consider myself rich. I am not rich enough. You're one to talk. I grew tired of scribing endless contracts and agreements neatly tucked away on Footfall. Well, I did that for how many years? But here, among the stars, you are always balanced on a knife edge. Nothing thrills me more than the tension of a warp jump, or the danger that lurks around every corner on a planet. Footfall was beginning to make me fat and stupid, Sherry. I do not want that. Do I trust the Trickster Twins? By the Exalted One, no. The underhanded rogues of Footfall came up with that name for a reason. The tricks of those frenzied Ashmags are all about things far more intriguing than the honest and law-abiding subjects of the Imperium can imagine. On the other hand, this is why I am keeping them close. Kor and Tora know who lifted them out of the cesspit proudly called the Shadow Quarters and who has been feeding that ravenous beast their insatiable lust for lucre. No, they are not going to betray me if only because they know I am now a part of your entourage, Sherry. They are not going to let the biggest pie in the Imperium pass them by without trying to get a slice for themselves. Vicious, cruel, dangerous beasts. Humans hold little interest for Xenos. We are entertainment for them, a means to keep boredom at bay. A commodity. But some of them contact us once in a while using their own people. Do not deceive yourself by thinking you are safe because there are no Xenos in sight. Those Aji are as cunning as they are ruthless. They cleverly pull at the strings of spies and traitors, subjugate those who do not fall for the promised reward, transform the ones who resist their promises into soulless puppets. The Emperor watches over me, and that is why I still haven't succumbed to the fate of many of my associates who have lost their lives to the stringy scoundrels. I think we've said all there is to say on this topic. It is difficult not to be aware of the powers that be, especially ones like Lord Captain Theodora. But we never met personally, as the difference between our positions was far too great, 
Theodora was a mighty ruler, the center of her own universe. And I, a pathetic commoner, was nothing next to her. But you were kind to me, Sherine. And in my eyes, that puts you above your esteemed aunt, or whoever she was to you. Or lucky lady, you mean? My heart has been coveted by proud men with hard eyes, gentle maidens with sensual voices, imperious lords and fierce leaders of void brigands. Only rogue traders have not yet featured among Jai Hedari's intimate friends. Why do you ask, Shiri? Oh, Shiri. With a few words, you have managed to make my heart flutter like a songbird caught in the snare of a skilled hunter. You enjoy being with me. Perhaps you even find me... amusing? Every girl dreams of hearing that she will make a fine toy and a worthy diversion. I understand. I'm just having a little fun, Sherry. I can't possibly just say, Oh, I like you too. Words as dry and dull as a voidsman's dinner. They are unworthy of us. If you are not simply amusing yourself by toying with my feelings, then why not give it a try? Go on. Or, wait, you haven't yet asked how I feel about being your romantic partner. Ask soon, Sherine. I simply cannot reject so ardent an admirer. To insult such sincere passion would be a wicked act in the eyes of the Exalted One. I have no doubt that you are a wonderful conversationalist, Sherry. I will make a note of your invitation and make sure to take you up on it when I next get hungry. But if the feelings in your soul have become a fire that is burning you up from within, then you may express them by bestowing a gift upon your humble servant. The language on Ifrit, my home world, is quite different from the one spoken in the Coronis Expanse. We bestow more than one meaning upon each word, allowing our wise men to fully express their sagacious thoughts and us lowly commoners our base passions and desires. Take Arji, for example. That is what I call every piece of scum and villain, because Arji means evil and foe and pathetic worm unworthy of consideration. Or take Ashmak. It means fool and little brother, and blind man who stumbled and would fall into a pit without guidance. Shirin is... Shirin means friend and comrade and roommate in a battle formation, like we are. Listen, Shirin, the giver of happiness and the dearest of my friends. I am who I am, a coal trader, a Kasbalikan agent, and your partner. We each have a past, and that past is sealed. I'm not prying into your soul, am I? Well, have pity on mine. It has already been gnawed at by the Arji. And if you don't like the sound of that, we'll just go our separate ways. Deal? All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business, too. The youngest child? All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business, too. Is there a sweeter subject in the universe to discuss, Sherry? You have my full attention. Ask the rose if it likes to receive the kisses of the sun every morning. Ask the sand dune if it likes to feel the caressing and playful touch of the wind. Ask and hear my answer, Sherry. Then let us both be silent together about this beautiful feeling, Sherry. Oh, I have no doubt you will.
May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Sherin? The Exalted One himself must have put the words of truth into its mouth, Sherin. Argenta? What could be more beautiful than the sight of a sister of battle, whose mere presence casts light in the dark corners of lost souls such as mine? But, alas, what remains of my sanity is telling me that poor Jai can only admire the radiance of this angel, forsaking any hope of ever touching her wings. Oh, I have no doubt you will.
May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little dog, Shireen? Oh, Shireen! Thank you for such generosity! I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Dorgonus. The Mercatum Tabula Officiale. It sounds almost as majestic as the Warrant of Trade. the price.
Is there money to be made? Light of my eyes, give her a boons and savior of the needy. From now on, two sons will grace the firmament of the Fon Palancius Protectorate. One bright and powerful, like the rogue trader himself, and the other slightly more humble, like his unassuming partner, the diligent owner of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, and all around the light, Jai Hidari. As I promised before, my crew will be your eyes and ears across the entire expanse, Sherin. Just give them time. And of course, the assistant to official trade representative Jai Hidari is already rushing to Dargonis to deliver goods of rare and exquisite quality to you and your people, O oh, master of many worlds. And once again, thank you, Sherin, from the bottom of my humble heart. I actually have something else for you, Sherin. Oh, I most definitely am not opposed, Sherin. The sweetness of your lips, Sherin, clouds the mind better than Calixian wine on a balmy day. But you did not think I would just let you go, did you? A humble gift in return for all the trouble. May the Exalted One keep watching over the path that you tread. Oh, I have no doubt you will. <laughs> well, it would have to be something that screams. Look how much the rogue trader loves me. Of course. Of Sherin, there you are. I've been waiting for you. I can't help it, Sherin. I am used to all doors being open to me. A consequence of my upbringing, no doubt. Sating a hunger greater than any bodily appetite. My curiosity. You see a person's face. Their clothes, their manner, is all just a mask. Smoke from the lips of a fire breather designed to hide the truth. But the contents of chests and cupboards, they are the reflection of the soul, in which the voice can glimpse another's heart. I have been wondering what kind of person you truly are. Sherry, you besmirch my heart with the black ink of bitterest insult. If you do not trust me, search me. How else am I to prove my innocence, Sherin?
Keep going, Sherin. You will strike lucky yet. Thank you. I loved the gift, Sherin. Everything the rogue trader desires.
are spoiling me with the splendor of your presence again, Sherry. Have you decided to treat your soul to the fruits of my eloquence? Or do you wish to discuss business with the newly appointed owner of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale? My gang is quite the void beast, Sherry, with three heads stemming from a single neck. Kor's untimely demise will not interfere with our mutual business. I do feel sorry for his twin, though. Tora has been getting into trouble with her brother since they were kids. Getting out of trouble, too. But not this time. But why are we talking about the departed, Sherry? We must save a few good words for the living. Take Falco, for example. I will impale that ash mag on a stake, Sherine. You will see. I will pick a slim one, so he has more time to appreciate it. Always keep your eye on the price. Came back from the so was it. Let's see, your lordship, rogue trader, Sherine, bane of my existence and savior of my flesh. Cruel fate has driven us straight into the foulest corner of the galaxy. 
Home sweet home to the Drukhari scum. I have it on good authority that no one leaves this place. Not alive, not dead, not even in pieces. So what do you want to hear, Sherin? A children's tale about a beautiful princess? A ballad about the Queen of Thieves? How about a new story, Sherin? Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived on a sand-covered lump of rock. And the core of that rock contained untold riches for servants of the Imperium. The girl scraped out those riches with her little hands, breaking her back and coughing up her lungs on behalf of people who had never clapped eyes upon her and who would never know her name. She did this every day until she turned 16. And then, then his servants came and drafted the girl into the 19th Ifrit Regiment. Can you imagine? Of course, the regiment was wiped out on its first sortie, but the girl survived. The Exalted One protects. So what was next? Years serving in the Astra Militarum, just a shitload of hard labor, and fighting, and deals, and shady connections, and new opportunities. But everything in this world ends sooner or later, Sherin. The now not-so-little girl went and fell in with the Casbalica. She saved up a little gold, and she even indulged in excess from time to time. Until living the good life almost cost the little girl her head after her patrons got caught in an internal investigation between the Officio Prefectus and Departamento Munitorum. So the girl ran as fast as her little legs could carry her until her eyes and the whims of fortune brought her to the expanse. A shitty story, all things considered, Sherin. The folks on Footfall are my only family, Sherin. The trickster twins in the rest of the rabble, plain talking and loyal as dogs. And sometimes as dull as the pommel of a worn out blade. Corporal Heidari reporting for duty, sir. I've had enough of the Astra Militarum shit to last a lifetime, Sherin. And my body's collected enough souvenirs from run-ins with Xenos and heretics to last two lifetimes. Except, when it comes to the guard, there's no such thing as used to be. That wretched life sank its claws into me good. But that also means I remember what it's like to be a small, shaking, insignificant pawn. And that's why I appreciate what I have now all the more. What? You think it's difficult? Once me and my fellow guardsmen snuck into the upper city in search of a good watering hole where the high and mighty of that world congregated. Another time, our regiment was sent to defend the tallest spires on a hive world. And I had an epiphany. I saw how the other half lives. And by half, I mean the ones born with a diamond spoon in their mouth instead of an entrenching shovel rammed up their arse. My eyes were open to the truth, Sherry. The Imperium is full of opportunities even for people like myself. The trick is knowing whose palms to grease, whose boots to lick, whose throat to squeeze, and whose arses to kick. I was very popular with everyone in the guard command, you see. I'd procure things for them, whatever they wanted. And so the Kaspalika took notice. You know, Sherin, I could still be bouncing around from one world to another, Hold up on higher old ships with only venal grunts for company if I hadn't decided I wanted more for my life. I accepted a shipment from the Casbalica of certain chemicals. You know, for carnal pleasures and the like. Some big vig was throwing a party to celebrate his fifth decade in the service. And that's when I caught the attention of the newly arrived commissar. I was rummaging through the pockets of Astra Militarum with one hand and shuffling the Casbalic in cargo with the other. You can imagine what would have happened to my head had the Commissar not started with my higher-ranked patrons. It was orcs. <laughs> not everything I say is a lie, Sherin. Whoop the fu- mm. Never mind.
Yes. Once upon a time, then his servants came and took the girl into the Astra Militare. The girl worked her little ass off until she met the Kasbalika and started leaving the hall. Oh, literacy. My blessing and my curse. I nagged every highborn who visited our barracks on their highborn business. I pored over stamps on crates in the warehouse and the seals on every door. Watched the commanders do paperwork and volunteered to help. That's how I learned, one step at a time. And then literacy became my ticket to a comfortable life. I swear on the grave of my drunkard father who sold me into the mines and on the lives of the 11 siblings I never had, Shireen. There are some things I've never lied to you about. Like I had a choice, Sherry. <laughs> I know better than to bite the hand that pours my amasak. Good as new, Sherry. No, honest. I can breathe and I'm not coughing up blood in the people's faces anymore. You did well by me again, Sherry. Thank you. I will do my best to repay you in kind. Don't give me that look, Sherry. The plotting nobles, the scheming footfall thugs, the mysteries of Xeno artifacts, the bowing and scraping before the self-indulgent ecclesiarchy. All that's gone. Everything beyond these walls melted away like a dream. I'm fighting for my life, my soul's being torn to shreds and my body's bleeding. Is it too much to ask to want to be myself, Sherry? Sorry, Sherry, but that's not going to work. All the poor wretches on footfall know me as the sweet-spoken lady from the hot planet. I've played the princess for too long to just smash her to pieces. But thanks for the kind words. It's good to know that my soldier's tongue hasn't scared you off. That's a negative, Sherin. Hatching clever plans has been the last thing on my mind recently, you see. But on the bright side, for that Ashmag homunculus, May the Arshi devour that black-souled bag of bones. Was busy experimenting on me, I managed to nick a couple of trinkets from his laboratory. Here, they may come in useful, if not for escaping, then at least for surviving in this rotten hole. Sir, yes sir, your lordship, Sherin. I'll be here, all primed and ready to go. Your Lordship, ask away. I'll tell it like it is. I'm not going to try to wriggle out of it. So what do you want to hear, Sherin? A children's tale about a beautiful prince. Then his servants came, but everything... So the girl ran as fast as her little legs could carry her, until her eyes and the whims of fortune... Like I had a choice, Sherin. <laughs> I know better than to bite the hand that pours my amasak. It's not as if I could just abandon you. Even smugglers have principles and feelings. Unfortunately, all I managed to do was spend a pile of your thrones without anything to show for it. None of the operatives who do business with Xenos knew where to find him. Not even Mercy. I shouldn't have reached out to him. He helped me move to the Expanse and set up business here a long time ago. But I liked it better when he was safely in my past. Sir, yes, sir. Your lordship.
Sherid? Oh, glorious son of dozens of worlds and billions of subjects, have you come to converse with Jai Hedari about the sweetness of her soul? Or do you wish to speak to a trade representative of the Imperium? <laughs> well, does the guise of one of the most powerful people in the Expanse suit me? It is hard to argue against words as wise as they are sweet, Sherin. Except sometimes guys is mailed with the skin of their unfortunate owners. And the only way to take them off is to tear skin from flesh. That is not something I want. Not anymore. <laughs> like you need to ask, Sherin. These Ashmags and Kashaz are tenacious. They lick their wounds faster than the Aji themselves. Tora finally got an implant for her jaw. Now she can speak properly instead of praying like a toothless donkey. She's been recruiting strapping guys and gals too, because Falco called a Rex. May the Aji savage the soul of that interstellar Perona. Oh, yes, Sherry. And here is what I think. Since the day we first met, I have been tossed about like a boat in a storm. Battered, dashed against the rocks, lashed by the waves. And then I was flung onto the shore, and a fabulous gift washed up beside me. A precious pearl of the deep. The Mercatum Tabula Officiale. And you know what? I enjoyed it. Yes, I was slammed face first into the rocks, and was up to my neck in water. But I finally had a taste of freedom. Just a smidge. Just a little bit. But it was enough to make me dream of it every night. Void, crack and take the Kasbalika and the cold trade. As for our mutual business, Sherry, I will remain your loyal partner if you desire. An equal partner. <laughs> then it is decided! Starting today, I will sail toward the future I choose. What a thrill it would be to ride the waves wherever they want to take me. Nothing important, really. Just a small commercial matter. Fine. Maybe it's better to let you know.
Cherry, I've been waiting for you. Hurry up, the water is hot, like the fire in a longing heart. Oh, we're just having a drink together for the first time. Our second first time, to be precise. You've now seen a whole new side of me, so I'm annulling our previous first time. Isn't it divine? Why didn't we do this sooner? Let us praise the Exalted One as we drink. He who sees into the depths of our hearts and sends us that which we never thought to dream of, but which we need more than anything. This evening will never end, Sherry. Night, Amasek, water, and passion will be yours forever. Only Frit, they say that if you want to know the future, you must turn your gaze to the past, for the Exalted One wove time in a loop. I heard a story, a wonderful story, about an adventurer and thief. She stole happiness from the universe, and alone she enjoyed the sweetness of that ripe fruit. But can anyone be happy alone? They cannot. And so the thief shared her trophy with a rogue trader whose beautiful face matched their beautiful heart. And together they feasted on their stolen happiness. They built castles, they conquered worlds, they loved one another. Oh, how they loved one another. They burned and were reborn in that love. And then, I don't remember how the story ends. What ending awaited them, do you think? Ah, Sherim, that only happens in stories. But I suppose we are in one, aren't we? No, it is too early. The yoke must be activated, or all is lost. <laughs> <laughs> 